This is the second video we do on this particular integral. In the previous video, we had a look at all of the different ways that are not optimal or downright wrong to calculate this particular guy. So now that we know the right approach, in this video, we're just going to do the actual calculation to arrive at the final result. So try and do the same, pause the video, and when you're done, unpause. So we settled on the following approach, calculating the complex contour integral of the function exponential jz divided by z. And then this guy, if we evaluate the integrand along the real axis and take the imaginary part, will give us sine x over x. So for that, we settled on the following contour, like so, where we have a contribution of a big circular segment from minus big r to plus big r and then also this little circle here uh, to avoid the singularity at the origin let's call the big circle c big r and the little circle c little r now by convention if we have a circular segment like this then this is counted positive if we run through this in the counterclockwise direction so the integral over c little r is taken positive in the counterclockwise direction. And the same thing is also true for its little brother here, c little r. Okay, let's do residue calculus, which is in this case quite trivial because there's no singularities inside the contour. So the end result is zero, which is just the same, of course, as uh, Cauchy's theorem. And in the next step, what we need to do is calculate the different contributions of our contour. The first contribution is the integral along the negative real axis. And I'm a bit too lazy to write down the integrand here. Next contribution is this little circle over here. Now, of course, also here in this case, the whole contour is taken positive in the counterclockwise direction. So this means that by the time we arrive here, we actually need to traverse c little r in the clockwise direction. But if we write down the following integral over c little r, that actually means by convention that we run through c little r in the counterclockwise direction. So therefore, to correct this, we need to have a lot, another minus sign in front of this, uh, this second term here. Okay, let's continue. Contribution of the positive real axis. That's the integral like so. And then finally, we have our big circle over there. So these are the four contributions. Let's focus now on the two circular segments. First of all, taking the limits of little r going towards, towards zero. Now, if we do that, then we need to look at the small limit theorem. That's, of course, the thing to do here. So for the small limit theorem, we need to calculate the limit um, of z going towards the origin of our integrand exponential jz divided by z, right? Right? Wrong, because we forget an important term. Do not forget to multiply by z minus the center of the circle. People often forget this, and that will cause lots of trouble, so please don't uh, do that. So in this case, if we evaluate this, the z drops out, and then we have exponential to the power of zero. Uh, so that's just one so this is the contribution that we need to take into account the the, the limit here to evaluate that uh, a little bit later but before we do that let's look at the limit of big r going towards infinity so we have two options the big limit theorem or jordan's lemma uh, in this case since we have this exponential here in the integrand it's jordan's lemma that we need to look at so for jordan's lemma there's another limit we need to consider limit at infinity of the integrand minus the exponential let's say or modulo the exponential so that that's one over z and then we have z minus z naught right wrong again because in this case we do not need such a factor so please do not confuse the limits that you have for these two particular tools uh, don't confuse them uh, otherwise you will end up in trouble. 
In any case, the end result is that the limit is zero. So this means that Jordan's lemma tells us that we do not need to worry about uh, this guy up, here, up there because in the limit, it will just, uh, just disappear. Um, and also we've closed it in the upper half plane, which is the right thing to do. Uh, just a quick recap of that second condition of Jordan's lemma. So if we have our complex plane here um, and we're dealing with exponential jz, let's have a look at this j. This j is over here. Our circular segment has its center in the origin. So what we need to do is we need to look at the complex conjugate of that j that gives us minus j adding that to our origin, which is zero. So that brings us here. The recipe then continues to draw a line between these two guys perpendicular to that. And then across from that line, this is where we need to be. This, this is the, the upper half plane. So the two conditions to apply Jordan's lemma are, are fulfilled to be able to conclude that the, the contribution vanishes. Okay, let's take these two limits then and see what's left. So then we have the integral from minus infinity to zero um, of exponential j. Well, here we're already on the real axis, so let's replace the z by x. Okay, then we have the integral over our little segment here. Where do we have it? Over there, uh, c little r. The small limit theorem tells us that we need to have a look at the angle of that circular segment. So that's pi in this case, um, and then j, and then that limit value we, we calculated. Of course, we should also not forget this minus sign from moving in the clockwise direction as opposed to the, the counterclockwise direction. And then finally, integral from zero to infinity exponential jx x dx which still is zero because there's no singularities inside, uh, inside the contour. Good, we're almost there. Let's take the imaginary part here. If we take the imaginary part, we have the integral from minus infinity to zero, and then the sine appears. So sine x over x dx. Let's move that other term to the right-hand side later. But first focus on the third one, sine x, x dx is equal to pi. Now we're almost there. The only thing we need to realize is that the integrand over here is an even function. So therefore, these two guys are just the same. And that means that we can just say that the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x over x dx at long last is equal to pi over two. Okay, good news. So we've solved the integral. Small remark, if mathematical rigor is something that keeps you awake at night, let's uh, have a look at what we've, uh, we've written here. Um, so, so this thing over here, uh, where we have the integral from, for example, from minus infinity to zero or from zero to infinity, of exponential jx divided by x. Strictly speaking, that does not make a lot of sense. Okay, sine x over x is something that, that converges, uh, but there's still a contribution of cosine over here, which is an integral which diverges. So this thing by itself diverges. What you should actually write in order to be more mathematically rigorous here is that what we've calculated is the principal value of the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity exponential jx over x dx. And that this thing is equal to j pi. That's a little bit more rigorous. Or you could have also taken the imaginary part before you took the, the limits. So that would have also taken care of that problem. But this is just some minor nitpicking with a, a technical detail. 